I'm backing up my truck, I'm gonna hook it up, loading up my boat with all my gear. I've been working hard all week, trying to make ends meet, spending time wishing I was fishing. Oh, Terry Wickstrom wants to take you fishing. Gather up your gear and come along. Well, Terry Wickstrom wants to take you fishing. This is Terry Wickstrom. Join Karen Collum, Greg Collagio, and me as we take you to some of our favorite fishing spots from Colorado to Minnesota, the Arctic Circle to Central America and beyond as we revisit episodes of Mountain States Fishing and Angling Adventures Television on the best of fishing with Terry Wickstrom. We got a great show lined up for you today. Something really different for me. Probably recognize this guy. He's been uh, on the show before. We did uh, well something similar to what we're going to do today. Only we were doing smallmouth bass on the Great Lakes. That's right, Terry. We were doing smallmouth bass out of flat skiffs, sight fishing them, just like we're going to be doing the bone fishing here. This is Captain Pat Eller. Hey, Terry. How are you? Great to see you again, Pat. And this is unique. We're a long way from Wisconsin and Colorado today, though. Yeah, a little bit of snow on the ground up there, and it's nice and warm down here. And I'd like to. Introduce you a very close friend of mine, Donna Tini. Well, Donna, you, um, I want to thank you for inviting us down here. By the way, folks, where we are is we're in the Bahamas. We're at the Bonefish Club. Is, did I get that right? It's Andros Island Bonefish Club, owned by Captain Rupert Leiden. We're going to go bone fishing in the flats, as he said. And this is something really new for me. So we're only going to be here a couple days, so I'm probably not going to get to fish a lot. But I wanted to come down and learn about bone fishing, and we want to show you this beautiful resort and place to go. So it's a really different experience. It's a whole lot of different fishing for me. Um, you know, being a bass and walleye guy, and just later in life getting into fly fishing, this is, you know, totally foreign to me. So I'm going to have a lot to learn today, Pat. It's a little bit more technical than what we're used to back home. Um, a little bit like hunting and fishing at the same time. But, you know, one fish can make a whole trip down here because they're just so exciting. And I'm just really looking forward to it. And Donna, the accommodations are fantastic. Well, we, uh, we really try hard here and make sure everybody's happy. So well, you know, people it's our come, number one. People come down here. Let's tell them just a little bit about what they get. They come down here. They, they can charter or fly commercial. They get to Andros Island. Then they get to the Bonefish Club. And once they get here, really virtually just about everything's taken care of. There's a few extras, but you're going to provide the lodging, the food, the guides. They bring their own fishing equipment. Yes, every, uh, everything is uh, inclusive in the pack package except for bar tabs and, and tips, and that's it. So. And it's just a fantastic, I mean, it's double occupancy t totally, two to room. We're going to, in fact, we'll show you some of those rooms. And we'll show you the beauty of this lodge while we're here and some of the accommodations and just the meals and the great way you treat people. But what we really want to show them is the beauty of this area. There's something very different about it. The first time you, you, know, you step on, on these grounds, it, it, you're relaxed. Everybody says that when they come in. So well, I know I'm you're feeling ready. You're going I'm to a minute feel. I'm going to walk over to this bar and get a drink and I'm going to relax. And tomorrow morning I'm going to start fishing and it's going to be fantastic. But we also want to show you the fishing because that's why we're down here, obviously, for angling adventures. And this time of the year, it's bone fishing. 
And that's what we're going to concentrate on. We also may see some CUDAs. Yep, we, uh, we will see some CUDAs, there's no doubt about that. Okay, and that, but basically we're going to be concentrating on the bonefish, except that night the guys might fish for sharks off the patio. I know. Oh, do that. We've been known yeah. to throw a few baits out there at night and see what we can bring up. Okay, and then, but other times of the year, um, all the bonefish is your main draw here. I believe in the summer you get some tarpon. There's tarpon here, there's permit, but it's nothing that you would chase because, you know, you have a rod in the boat in case you see one. Um, because there are a lot of great bonefish here. They're, they're huge. And so that's what we target. And my bonefish. understanding is some of the biggest bonefish in the world live on these flats. It's one of the largest saltwater flats in the world. And some of the biggest bonefish in the world live on these flats. Lots of big fish out here, especially this time of year. November, they start spawning and big fish then, big fish now. And in the summertime, uh, there's also a lot of fish, but they're smaller. They tend to be a little bit smaller. Florida gets some big bonefish. The thing is, there's a lot of fishing pressure and they're hard to catch. Down here, the great thing about this place when we bring our groups, if you've never done it before, there's lots of smaller fish to go out there and learn on. But if you're somebody who's done a lot of bone fishing, there's lots of big fish here that you can go trophy hunting. So you can have two separate groups within a group and have a great time for everybody. Well, I'll tell you what, guys, I'm going to get a drink, get settled in. I'll meet you in the morning. You bet. We're going to head out. Donna, thanks for inviting You're me. You're very welcome. Thank you. You bet. And join us out in the water. We'll show you bone fishing, Andros Island, the Bonefish Club. You know, for people who've never bone fished before, Pat, why don't you kind of explain the process here, what's going on? You know, Sean is pulling the boat, he's up on the, he's down looking over the water and you're looking out over the water. Right, Sean's up on the tower, which every six inches of height that you gain, it's amazing how much more you can see. Just standing up here in the front of this boat, you can see a lot more than if you were standing down in the cockpit there. And with Sean up on the tower, it's even a better advantage. So I'm looking and he's looking. Chances are he's going to see the fish first, but that doesn't mean I don't want to at least, you know, have a chance at seeing it first, because the sooner you see the fish, the better chance you have to set up your cast. And then it's just a matter of which direction is the fish going, getting a quick and accurate cast so it drops close enough to the fish that the fish sees it, but not so close to them that you spook them. And if he sees the fish before you do, he's going to tell you, point your rod out, he's right. going to say, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 12 right. o'clock. We work off the clock system here with 12 o'clock, of course, being to, to the front of the boat. And it'll be 30 feet or 50 feet at 10 o'clock or 1 o'clock. And you'll start putting the line in the air, and hopefully you'll see the fish in time so that you can be accurate by seeing the fish. Otherwise, he's going to talk you into where, right. where to lay the cast down. When people think of fishing, they think of casting out or working a lure. But right. here, you're hunting for fish, you're finding one or a group of fish and you're casting to that fish and you're trying to make a presentation right to that spot to that fish and you're not fishing the rest of the time. You're looking, you're hunting, right. you're looking for fish. You spend very little time actually casting and it's just when you have a fish, it's in casting range, you try to get that particular fish. You either do or don't, you move on to the next fish. Right, and these fish are so spooky because there's barracudas here, there's sharks, all these big things that eat them. Not to mention we're in really shallow water. At times we're only fishing six or eight inches of water and you've got a lot of birds like ospreys up on top that are coming in. So anything that goes over them flashes or just makes them really jumpy. So it, it just increases the whole technicality of the fishing here. 30 feet. Shoot it. Nice cast. Strip. It's a cast again. Wait a second, wait. It's twitching. Stop. Stop. Trip. Trip. There, you there go. we go. Fish on. Fish on. Good eye, Sean. Yes, Way sir. to go. Let's get him away from that mangrove yeah, there. One little moment. shoot and that's where he's going. Nice. All right. There Excelente. We go. 
And that's what you flew down here for, Terry. Well, they make some runs, don't they? Yeah, it's a strong fish. Really do. Even the ones that aren't all that big. They're powerful fish. All of a sudden, he's going to say, you know, that's enough of this. Let's get out of here, and you're going to see the backing out there. Is this an average fish for this? This is actually a little bit small. They're a real big fish, but... They're powerful. Absolutely. You know... The fastest fish live on these flats, you know. Otherwise, they get eaten by the... The sharks and... Um, the ones that are faster than them. I tell you what, you know, somebody told me, and I tend to believe it after the little bit of saltwater fishing I've done, that any saltwater fish pulls stronger than a freshwater fish. Yeah, look at that. We had him in, and now we realize, oh, that's the end of that. Yeah, he's going. <laughs> yeah, we're dealing with about a two, two and a half pound fish. Here comes our, look at, look at that. Into your backing. Here goes our backing. Wow. <laughs> you said, yeah, well, Sean was saying he's seen them up to 16 pounds here. Oh, yes. Oh, they're bigger oh, yes. than that. Bigger yeah, than that here. We've seen them bigger than that, yep. hey, Sean? Oh, yes. Is there something I can do to help or land it or? Well, I think he's kind of yeah. ready to go. You want to grab him, Sean? Yeah, I'll get him for you. There we are. Be a good fish down in Belize or Mexico in a lot of places and here we're saying boy that's not a real big one but what do you think Sean two pounds yeah it's about two pounds two and a half look at all the pinks and the blues on there yeah you think they're just silver or kind of gray colored but just look at all the colors yeah. in the sun it's at yeah. look at the tail the color right on the tail well he stands out I try to try there we go Off he goes. There you can see all the colors and look at how lit up he is. Wow. See the fluorescent tinges on there? Yeah. Thank you, Sean. Good job. Thanks. Just think there's snow on the ground at home and we're down here in well, shorts, huh? At your home. Colorado there's snow in the mountains, but my yard is 60 degrees. Oh. Boy. <laughs> Folks, I gotta tell you something. It's, what, what's the temperature here? It's about 75 right now. 75 degrees and Sean, as great a guide as he is and a good guy, a wonderful person. Where's a fleece under his rain jacket oh, when yes. we're running? I don't drink he my thinks, water this cold. He thinks this is he thinks he thinks this is frostbite weather. Oh yes, oh yes. I don't drink my water this cold, so. <laughs> hey, you got a great place down here. Thank you, thank Let's you. Let's get some more. Let's find oh, some yes. more, Sean. Let's do it. Drop it. Wait. Strip. Long strip. Long strip. Long strip. There, you go. there we go. All right. Man. I didn't and, see how big a fish was it. It's not real big, but look at that. First run. We got a bunch I, of back. I tell you, for their size, he's already got into the backing and he's still running. Yep. Want to land him, Terry? I'll give him my best shot. All right. We got a pretty stout leader on there, yep. so you don't have to worry about breaking it off. Get them right Just underneath. Squeeze those. right between the shoulders. Yep. There you go. There you go. Oh, nice okay. fish. Oh yeah, nice fish. There we now, go. Sean was telling me about the eyes on this fish. We get a camera to get a close up on the eye first. There's. A, show them what happens when you try to touch the eye. There's a membrane on them that you can't touch the eye. And what that is, it's a protective coating. So when they get down and dig into the mud net to root out the crabs and the uh, shrimp covers up their eyes so it doesn't bother them. That's just a nice, nice bone fish. And you saw the run, folks. This fish made for the size. We'll get that one back in the water. Yes, go ahead. Shoot. Okay. There you go. There we go. Well, you keep them out of the mangroves here. 
that was a great job of coordination with you and Sean too, because I know at first you didn't see that fish, and he had your cast, and he redirected your cast a couple times and right on him. Yep, absolutely. That's awesome the way the guide and the fishermen work together like that to just see that fish and put the line on him. Yeah, definitely a team effort out here. Look at how far out that line is. I mean, yeah, it's just forever. Oh, Bone, yep. The Bonefish Club in the Bahamas, this is what it's all about. Yep. Sean Leiden and the Andros Island Bonefish Club. That's right. Oh, well, you got the fly line back in here, so we're making some progress. But Warm breeze across the flats and a bonefish on the line. Life doesn't get too much better. That's right. You gonna do the honor, Sean? Yes, I'll get this one. Yep. It's got some shoulders on him. Oh, that's a nice fish. That's yeah. the best fish so far. Oh. All right. Let's get a good look at that one. This one squeeze on the head. There you go. Right, look at the thickness of the show. Them. Put your fingers across the back of that fish just to show them the thickness of that fish. That's that, folks. Is that's a big bone. Yep. That's a nice, nice bonefish from Andros Island Bonefish Club in the Bahamas. Yes. Great job of putting us on Thank fish, you. Sean. Thank you. Let's get that one released and let him go. Nice fish. The man with the eyes. Nice fish. Don't shake my hand. You got to shake Sean's <laughs> on that one. He made the spot up in the mangroves there. It's a potential linebacker right there. It's got some shoulders on it. Yeah. Hey, this. Uh, let's take a minute. This would be a great time to talk about, you know, we're catching a few fish and, you know, we're only going to be here a couple days. So the, whether the camera catches a big fish or not, we never really know. But um, this is really an opportunity on Andros Island to catch big bonefish, isn't it? Yep, this place is special for that, no doubt about it. Tell us a little bit about some of the bigger fish you've caught. <laughs> the biggest one I've caught is 14 pounds. Um, kind of the benchmark of a trophy here is going to be a double-digit fish. That's kind of the, the place where everybody shoots for, you know, the 10-pound fish. So it's not uncommon to get five, six, seven, eight-pounders. No, that's average fish are going to be four to five pounds here a lot of times. That's pretty incredible. In fact, we've got some pictures of some of the bigger fish here. I'd like to show you just a, a few of those before we get back on the water. In fact, take a quick look at some of these big fish who are caught by people, and let's you and I get back and see if we can catch one of our own. Your turn. Let's go. All right. Go, let it go. Hey, there you go. All right. <laughs> I'll tell you, folks, if you knew the patience these people had with me today, Sean's given me opportunities at probably 40 fish today before I finally made the right cast to hook one up. And, and, yeah, and I still didn't listen, but I got it anyway. But whether I land this or not, I've hooked up my first bonefish on a fly, and boy, do they pull. It's always fun when you're with somebody, whether you're guiding them or just fishing with them. And they catch you their first of a species. I'll let you get them. My first bonefish. All right, gentlemen, thank you. And then, and I've got to let you know that the camera crew thought it couldn't be done. <laughs> All right, well, it's not a monster, go, but it's Terry. just a nice representative fish. You hold it. My first bonefish, and I'll tell you what, folks, if you knew the energy and number of casts I attempted to make to get this fish, but with the patience of Sean, my guide, and Pat fishing with me. My first bonefish in the Bahamas, Andros Island, the Bonefish Club. We'll get this one back there in the water. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, it just shows you, um, I've never really fished with these eight and nine weight rods, having to make these kind of casts before. Done a lot of fly fishing back in Colorado with lightweight rods, and it took me a long time to even learn to make the casts, and I'm far from there. But even they were able to get me on fish and have a good time. Good job, Terry. Thank you. First one. All right. That was awesome. Hey, Sean, we're going to head out of here tomorrow, but I had a great time. Thanks for teaching me what you did about bone fishing, it's and a you're a great guide, and Thank I just you. want to say thanks, and it's uh, everybody, you and the, the Bonefish Club. I tell you what, this guy took me, and I tell you what, it was a struggle, folks. I want to tell you this, that I had a 
more than an, an, <laughs> more than my share of bad casts, but he stayed with me until he put me on until I caught a bonefish. And I just want to thank you. The guides here are wonderful, Sean. Oh, thank you. Thank you guys you. really thank take you. care of people, and thank it's just you. great. Hey, I hope you enjoyed coming down here to the Bahamas, to Andros Island, the Bonefish Club, as much as we did. Um, this is Captain Rupert Leiden. He's the proprietor, the owner. Hey, thanks for having us down here. <laughs> we you. really had a great time. It Th was awesome. Thank you very much, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad you came. And I must also give my thanks to Pat for bringing you down. Well, Pat, thanks for fishing with me You today. bet, Terry. had just, a great time. It was you. tremendous. Well, I'll tell you what, we really enjoyed fishing here. You got the largest saltwater flat in the world out here? Yes, sir, we really do. We really do. Um, in the middle of Andres, the bites of Andres, we can put a thousand boat and don't see another boat. And when we move to the west side of Andres, we have 240 miles of flat off the Great Bahama Bank, and we have bonefish every inch of the way. And good bonefish. Oh God, we have one place we call the Land of the Giant. I mean, we got bonefish up to 25 pounds. No kidding. Oh, that's incredible. But again, I think I'd encourage anybody to come down here, Rupert, and visit your place. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it very much, and I can show you we have a good team, especially Donna Tini. She has done an excellent job over the last seven years. She was working with us, and um, um, she take the fishermen like our own kids. You know what I mean? She treat them right, and um, uh, at the end of the day, they all they have is big smiles on their face. Well, for me, it's so different than anything I've done before. I've seen it on television, just like everybody else who, who's watching now, but it's uh, something you have to experience if you're into uh, fly fishing especially, but even if you're not spin fishing even, come down and experience, you really like it. And uh, I'm sure Rupert, you'll, give, you'll take good care of them. Yes, I would take extra good care of them. Yes. And then All right, well, you, if you're out there and you're watching and you've wanted to go bone fishing, you won't find a better place in the world than right here in the Bahamas, Andrus Island, the Bonefish Club. Give it a try and join us next week for another angling adventure. This is the place.